Today's topic that we're talking to Dr. Tina Feely about is allergies and intolerances. So can you tell us what the difference is between an allergy and an intolerance? Absolutely, it's a great question. Um, so an allergy is something that is going to cause uh, issues in your body that can be potentially life-threatening, but also harmful to your body in general, especially over a long period of time. So there's different types of allergies. There are the food allergies you think of where you need your EpiPen, where it causes the hives and the wheezing and the um, vomiting and diarrhea and just um, a lot of an almost instant reaction within like a half hour to an hour of eating that food. And then there's other allergies like celiac disease or milk protein allergy that can cause your body to um, have bloody poop and to um, not be able to digest food well and things like that. So there are things that cause you to have ultimate harm to yourself. And intolerance is something that makes you feel kind of lousy, but it doesn't actually cause any damaging effects to you in, in general, besides the fact that you feel kind of lousy, but it won't cause ultimate harm or potentially kill you or, or things like that. Um, so those are kind of the major differences just from how we separate them in terms of how we think. And then um, the, the ultimate difference comes down to biology, which we don't need to get into right now. Um, but it comes down to the actual reactions that are happening within your body um, when you're exposed to the foods as well. Right. And so what are the most common allergies and intolerances that you see in children and babies? Yeah, so it really depends on the age. Um, so by and large in the uh, newborn period until a baby eats solid foods, the number one allergy is usually a milk protein allergy. Um, so a milk protein allergy is something that um, the baby actually has an allergy to the milk, but it's not an allergy that you think of with getting hives and, and trouble breathing and things like that. It actually affects their gut. And the, the major symptom with it um, that we use to diagnose is, is having bloody stool. Um, so having, having bloody poop, but also they're generally um, vomiting, refusing bottles, very fussy, uncomfortable, but um, the major hallmark is the bloody poop. Um, with that also, sometimes babies that have a milk protein allergy also have a soy allergy because the soy protein and milk proteins are very similar to each other. So they can kind of um, mimic each other. So some parents will switch from a milk formula to a soy formula and not see any difference. And, and that's the reason because they can kind of be similar allergies in that. Um, once the baby gets older around when they're starting solid food, then we think also um, they could still have a milk protein allergy, but we also think of allergies like the typical allergies you think of that cause the wheezing and the hives and, and things like that. Um, and those allergens are typically peanuts, tree nuts. So tree nuts are things like almonds, pecans, things like that. Um, shellfish, thin fish, dairy, eggs, wheat, and soy. Right. And then in terms of intolerances, the two that I think um, we talk about most common are um, lactose intolerance. Um, that is actually not, it's different than a milk protein allergy. A lactose intolerance means that you have trouble breaking down the sugar in the milk itself. And that we generally don't see in babies. That's usually more um, toddlers and above. Usually not, we don't see it before the age of two typically. Um, and then also a lot of, um, there's right now a lot of talk about like gluten intolerance as well. Again, not something we typically see with babies. That's usually a, a older children. Right. And um, so how do you know if a baby has an allergy or intolerance? What are some of the signs that you would typically see? So um, this is definitely um, something where, especially when it comes to like a milk protein allergy, or if you're concerned that your child is, is having an uh, issue with, with dairy or milk protein, I would say go to your pediatrician or go to your doctor right away to talk about it because it can actually be, especially in the newborns and, um, and younger infants, it can be kind of tricky to, to hash out what is um, the, an allergy versus what is an intolerance. Um, and part of that is because um, 
a good amount of babies with reflux will actually respond to a milk-free diet. So it's not that they are actually having a milk protein allergy. It might be a milk protein more like intolerance, but it's making the reflux worse. So although it's not having those harmful effects of like what we were talking about before, like a true allergy where it can cause you to have ultimate harm in your body and maybe not gain weight and things like that, it can make them fussy and irritable and make the reflux worse. Um, so sometimes we'll actually recommend a milk-free formula or a milk-free or mom to go on a dairy-free diet if she's nursing um, for the reflux that's not actually a milk protein allergy. So in terms, so I, it, that's why I say definitely if you're concerned about it, definitely go to your doctor so that you can um, kind of discuss your specific baby and their specific symptoms because it, it can be a little bit of an overlap in that age group. Um, but the hallmark, again, of a milk protein allergy would definitely be if they um, are vomiting after each feed, and, and vomiting, I mean, like, like very profusely, not just spit up and moving on. I mean, you know, forceful vomiting and if they're having any bloody stool. But, um, those are definitely hallmarks of a milk protein allergy, but sometimes there's a little bit of, of an interaction between the two that it definitely takes a little more discussion with you and your doctor to, to hash out what's what. And this is a um, something that I see commonly around some of my own friends is that other mothers have suggested going off milk or changing the baby from a, um, a cow's milk formula. Is this something, this is something that should really only be recommended by a pediatrician or a doctor rather than just hear from friends? Absolutely. Absolutely. I can't emphasize that enough. If you're going to make any changes to your baby's diet, then I would definitely recommend talking to your doctor or talk to your pediatrician, talk to your GP about it prior to making that change. Um, because A, especially I, so with my, my own daughter had reflux that was responsive to a milk-free diet. And I can tell you as a nursing mom, a dairy-free diet is not easy to do. <laughs> so before you put yourself through that, you might want to also make sure that that's something that, you know, would be helpful. But also anytime you make a change to your baby's diet, um, it's going to ultimately change what um, they'll take in the future, when you're going to introduce different solids to them. And, and um, I would definitely recommend talking to your doctor before making any dietary changes um, because it can, it can be really eye-opening depending, again, there's a lot of overlap between things and what works for one baby might not work for another. So depending on the, the specifics of the situation. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, definitely. Um, so can allergies or intolerances ever be confused with anything else? Um, definitely. So um, a lot of times, especially around the six-week mark, um, parents will um, come and, and talk about their baby being really fussy. And so allergies and intolerances can definitely be confused with reflux. But around the six-week mark, it also could just be colic, which um, generally around the four to six-week time, babies... Um, end up stooling less, so parents will think that they're um, constipated, even though that a lot of times the stooling patterns can be completely normal for a four to six week old. Um, also, um, colicky babies, we don't really know what causes colic, but um, uh, sometimes parents will come and say, it must be the milk, and they've come in at six weeks and they've tried eight different formulas and nothing's making any difference, and, and they've tried each one you know, for a couple of days here or there, and, and it's not making a difference. And it turns out that it's actually because of um, colic, which is frustrating, but um, because there's not much you can do for it, but at least it's reassuring and that you don't have to take something out of their diet and, and yeah. things like that. So there are definitely overlap between multiple diagnoses, especially in the younger babies. Um, and again, just a, a, a fussy infant in general, it can often be attributed to multiple different things, but oftentimes it gets attributed to problems with the formula, problems with the milk, problems with reflux or constipation, um, when it may not be any of them. It may just be that they need more sleep. For example, I know a lot of babies exactly. 
get diagnosed with a colic when it's actually just that they uh, have only had three 20 minute sleeps throughout the day. They just, they just need to sleep. They're, they're fussy. Because absolutely. They yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, thank you so much for chatting about allergies and intolerances. It's been really informative and thank you very much, Tina. Thank you.